What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2018 Mark 7.5 Golf R. Today on the Golf R behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your rear brakes. This is going to be applicable to your Mark 7 and 7.5 Golf Rs. In front of me, we have a pair of Zimmerman rotors along with some OE Ate pads. We have a couple different options available on fcpro.com depending on what you want to go with as far as rotors and pads. But for today, we're going to stick to some OE goodness. Now, typically these are going to last you anywhere from 40 to 60,000 miles. It all depends on the kind of driving you do with your vehicle. The vehicle behind us has about 70,000 miles. We're not quite sure about its previous uh, service history, so we're going to go ahead and give it some fresh pads and rotors. The pads are getting a little low and the rotors are developing a bit of a lip. That would be an easy way to check your brakes is simply by looking at your rotors. If you can run your fingernail across the face of them and it catches on either the inner or outer portion of the disc, then more than likely they're developing a lip, meaning they're pretty worn, so you want to go ahead and replace them. Another thing you can do is just simply look at the brake pads, do a visual inspection. If they look pretty low, it's probably a good time to replace them. There are feeler gauge tools out there that you can use to check the thickness and go from there. Now, before we get started on this DIY, let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need for this job. For this DIY, we have two torque wrenches, both a half inch drive and three eighths drive. We have a three eighths drive and quarter inch drive ratchet. We have our piston compressor tool. This is CTA 1465. It's a single piston caliper, so that will do just fine. If you have it available, I mean, this is a newer car. It still has the genuine caps that go over the lug bolts. You're gonna need a removal tool for that. That's what the small one is here for. If you don't have the Volkswagen tool, you can just use a small pick. Uh, moving on, we have a 17 millimeter socket. We have a, an extension for our 3 eighths drive ratchet. We have a 7 millimeter hex, a T30. Moving on, we have a small wire brush. You can use a wire wheel attached on the drill as well. A small flathead screwdriver. We have a hammer here just in case our rotors are seized to the hubs, which more than likely they're going to be as this is a New England car. More specialized and needed for this job is going to be some sort of scanner. Today we're going to be using our Autel uh, MaxiCheck 808. There is a smaller version of this. You can get a uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi dongle from Autel as well. It's a little more affordable and you can just get, uh, if you just have a Volkswagen, you can just get the Volkswagen app for it instead of having something a little bit more expensive like this. Now we use this in the shop all the time, so the 808 works for us. We'll link both of them in the description below for you. From that, we have some liquid moly ceramic paste. Some brake clean is always handy whenever doing brakes and a large impact just to get our wheels on and off easier. Now we know what tools we're working with, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, before you start any brake job, no matter what the vehicle is, you always wanna be aware of where your brake master cylinder reservoir is located. You wanna be aware of how much fluid is in it as when you compress the pistons back into the calipers, that fluid level is gonna change. The last thing you wanna do is overpressurize the system and cause a leak. So what you can always do is find it. On the Golf R, it is located on the left-hand side of the firewall on the interior of the battery. And you can take a look at your level. You can use a flashlight to see what the level is at. Ours is just a little bit below max, seeing as how the rear pads are a bit worn, so it makes sense. So I'm not too worried about overpressurizing the system up here, but let's just say your, your fluid has been done in the past and the level has changed a bit. What you can do is simply undo the cap. And then sometimes there's a filter element in the way. You can remove that if you need to. You don't always have to but you can extract a bit of fluid with a syringe or extractor tool and then just top it off at the end once you're done with your brake job. So just be mindful of that. But now that we know where the reservoir is, our next step is gonna to be to hop inside the Golf R and prepare the vehicle as far as retracting the electronic parking brake in the rear so that we can compress our pistons once we get to that point. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, my good people, I just hopped inside the Golf R. We're gonna use our Autel, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, to set our parking brake in the correct position so that we can do our rear brakes. I'm just gonna hit the start stop button once just to cycle the car on. No foot on the brake, pretty straightforward. We're gonna use our Autel. We're gonna go to service function. We're gonna go to electronic parking brake. We're gonna select Volkswagen. We'll do automatic selection, and then we'll hit read. That way it connects to the car properly. It pulls up the VIN, does all the guessing work for you. We're gonna select on brakes. 
Then from there, we're going to select electronic parking brake function or EPB function. Plug in the connector to the vehicle. For those of you wondering, the connector is going to be located above your dead pedal. Most cars are going to be under the dash on the driver's side, but it's there's no covers or anything there. You can just reach underneath and feel the uh, the port. Switch ignition on, which we did at the beginning. It's plugged in. Release the electric parking brake and handbrake. It, is, it wasn't set to begin with, so we can hit OK. And it says in this program, the following steps are run through. Start the brake pad change, which opens the brakes completely. Change the brake pads, which you're going to do on the back of the car. And then end the change, which will release the piston or put the piston back in operating position for the parking brake. So it says, which step test do you want to perform? Or which test step would you like to perform? We're going to start the brake pad change. I'm just going to open the brake pads completely. And for the auto, it's going to be option one. Then you hit OK. And there you heard both pistons retracted fully on the back of the car. Now at this point, the brakes are fully open, so we can go ahead and get the car up in the air, do both sides in the rear, and then you can put the car back down on the ground, and then we'll close out of this program. So with that, let's hop over to the back of the Golf R and get started on this brake swap. All right, my good people, now that our electronic parking brake is set, ready to go, we're gonna work on the rear right of the Golf R today. However, the steps are going to be identical for both the driver and passenger side. We're going to start by removing our beauty covers over our lug bolts. Again, using that Volkswagen tool. If not, a right angle pick will work. Just make sure for those of you that still have your wheel locks, uh, make sure you have the key so you can remove your wheels. Last thing you want to do is get ready for a big job and not be able to take your wheels off. Ask me how I know. And yes, while we're on the lift today, this is probably one of the best driveway jobs. And if you're like me and you don't have a lift at home, then all the jobs are driveway jobs. Now we have those off, we're gonna work on removing our five 17 millimeter lug bolts. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna use a 17 on electric impact today. If you do not have an impact, I suggest that you break these lug bolts free first while the vehicle is still on the ground with a breaker bar, and then you can go ahead and raise it up and remove the lugs the rest of the way. Now we have our wheel off. We have a better view of where we're going to be working. We have our brake caliper right here, our rotor. Now I suggest if you have the time, go ahead and take the time now to clean your calipers up a bit. That way when you assemble everything back together at the end, you have nice new hardware with a fresh clean caliper. You're not getting everything dirty. So I'm going to take two seconds. Go ahead and clean this up real quick and then uh, we'll continue on. everything just cleaned up a bit more we're going to start by removing our anti-rattle clip for that i'm going to use a small flathead screwdriver and just start at the top here and trying to be gentle here not to mar the paint on the caliper itself once you get it started you can pull it off the rest of the way by hand go ahead and hang on to this now with that off we are going to move on to the back side of the caliper we have two dust caps to remove i'm just going to pry them off using the flathead screwdriver and then you can take them off by hand all right, with our anti-rattle clip removed, the next thing on the list is the two seven millimeter hex that hold the caliper to the carrier. Now on the driver's side, you have all the room in the world to use a small two inch extension on your ratchet with the seven millimeter hex. For the top bolt, for the bottom one, there's easy access just using the ratchet. On the passenger side for the top one, I recommend you switch over to a small wrench. So we're gonna use a seven millimeter wrench and we're gonna use that in conjunction with the bit here. So I'm gonna literally feed the bit through the wrench. I'm just gonna use my screwdriver to push it through and there's one guide pin out. For the bottom, we'll do it the traditional method with the ratchet and the hex bit since we have more room to work with. Okay, now I'm just gonna push it through, same thing with the screwdriver. Then we can pull it out the back. Now we have our guide pins out. We're gonna work on removing our caliper and from there we're gonna compress the piston while we have it ready to go in hand. So you can just wiggle this back a bit, 
pay attention to the pads as you remove these because they are a little bit different. Your inboard pad has a anti-rattle clip built into it on the top half, and that's gonna be your inboard pad, which is this one right here. This one has a clip on it. The outboard pad one does not. With the brake pads off, we can go ahead and situate our caliper, just something like that. There's no stress right now on the brake hose or the electrical connector going to the electronic parking brake. We're just kind of wedging it up here. Just gonna clean off a little bit of the iron remover we used here. Now we're gonna take our piston tool and compress the piston. While these pistons do have the notches, like the traditional Volkswagen Audi group vehicles have, that need to be spun in. These do not need to be spun in, so you can just use a regular piston tool. So we'll go ahead and get our tool in place. Have that centered as best as possible whenever you're doing any sort of compressing. The last thing you wanna do is get your piston to go in at an angle. And then you're just gonna compress by turning the tool until it stops. Should be very easy to go back in. Another trick you can do is often you can crack the bleeder screw and just push the fluid out but this car has fairly new fluid, so we're not too worried about recontaminating the system here. All right, our tool's bottomed out. We can go ahead and remove it now. And then with that, I'm just gonna wedge the caliper up here, and it's not gonna go anywhere. Now we can go ahead and work on removing our brake disc. Now what's great about these newer cars is due to the design of the electronic parking brake and how they kind of package everything together. You don't have to remove the caliper carrier bracket. If you did remove yours already, the torque spec for those bolts are 90 Newton meters plus 90 degrees, but you have to replace them as they're torque to yield. Today, we're not removing them as there's zero need to do that for the brake job. So we're gonna start by removing this T30 that holds our rotor in place. That one's stuck on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screwdriver and just shove it in the fin of the rotor here so that I can keep the whole rotor from spinning on me and I can break that free a little bit easier. Now that it's broken free, just as insurance, I'm gonna take one lug bolt and just hand start it so it doesn't fall on me. I don't drop the rotor on my feet or anything like that. And ours is seized on there. I knew that already. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a couple whacks with the hammer. Gonna remove our set screw the rest of the way. We'll take our lug bolt out. And now we can just simply sneak our rotor out. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and clean up any corrosion on the hub. So we're gonna take our wire brush. We have a wire wheel on a drill attachment that works well too. Just go ahead and clean this up really nicely and use your choice of anti seize. We're gonna use liquid moly ceramic paste today and go ahead and get that ready for our new brake disc. We'll hit everything with a little bit of brake cleaner. We're gonna clean the caliper carrier, especially where our new pads are gonna be riding on. Just get any loose brake dust or debris off. All right, with everything nice and cleaned up, we're gonna get our hub ready. Well, Zimmerman doesn't require, if you will, any paste in between the hub and the disc. I know that us living in New England, the way these things get rusty, anything you can do to help that from happening is gonna be good. So in this case, liquid moly ceramic paste will be our friend and it'll hopefully keep the rotor from seizing to the hub down the road next time this job has to be done. You also wanna make sure your hands are somewhat clean whenever you're installing your new Zimmerman rotors. They are zinc coated. The last thing you wanna do is hit them with any brake clean and deteriorate that coating on them. So these are in pretty good shape. We're gonna gently slide it over and then get our set screw started so it holds everything in place. Just like we removed it at an angle, we'll feed it back in. There we go. I like to do a little dabble between the set screw and the rotor so that that, that does not seize in place either. And we'll start it by hand first. And then we're just gonna use the old calibrated wrist, snug this up. But for those of you following along at home, eight Newton meters is gonna be the torque for these little T30s. Nice and snug. Now with that, we can go ahead and install our new brake pads. Those are gonna go directly to the caliper carrier. Here's our outboard, which we lost at the very beginning. 
when we took the old one off, and here's our inboard. So you can see the inboard pad has the spring clip on it, the outboard pad has nothing. As the caliper goes on, I'll show you, you want to make sure both ears of this clip are sitting on the inside of the caliper, and that'll kind of, kind of help with some noise. We're going to go ahead and dabble a little bit of this paste on the ears of the brake pads. There's the outboard pad, ready to go. Just like that. So now our pads are loaded, ready to go, and we can gently swing our caliper over. Beautiful, and it should look something like that. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your guide pins are nice and clean. If they're not, go ahead and wipe them down, give them a little uh, light uh, rub, maybe with some emery cloth or a wire wheel. And then at this point, it's up to you if you wanna lubricate them before they go back in or not. Long uh, lived argument on the internet. I always lubricate mine before I reinstall them. So I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna wire wheel them real quick and then we'll get ready for install. All right, I got my guide pins all cleaned up. I have the slightest bit of ceramic paste on them and I'm just gonna go ahead and slide them in and make sure that they poke through and get to the beginning of the threads on the carrier here. There's two. And now we'll grab our seven millimeter hex. I'm gonna use my hex and wrench combo for the top one. And then we'll use the ratchet for the bottom one. The torque spec for these guide pins is 35 Newton meters. Now, obviously for the top one, we're not gonna be able to get a torque wrench in there, but it's not a lot of force. As you saw, they came out really easily. So they're gonna be uh, going in just as easily. That's gonna be good for the top one. And then we got this bottom one snugged up. This one, we can get a torque wrench on it. So we'll do that just for good measure. Okay, torque wrench is set to 35. There we go. All right, now that our guide pins are torqued down, don't forget to put your dust caps back on that keep the boots free from any debris. And now we can go ahead and install our anti-rattle clip. You wanna make sure that the two hooks on the clips go in all the way on the two small holes on the caliper themselves. I like to start with the bottom one first, get that ear over the carrier there, and get the next hook started. Doesn't have to go in all the way just yet. Get the end of this clip over the last ear on the carrier and then push everything in. Now we can throw our wheel back on. Always start your lug bolts by hand. The last thing you want to do is cross thread into your hub, especially after doing a DIY and not being able to go for a test drive. It's important when you get back in your car, don't forget to pump up the brakes after doing a brake job. The last thing you want to do is just get in and roll off. You're gonna have no pedal, so make sure you pump them up nice and firm, and then you can go on and bed in your brakes. We're gonna use the impact just to snug the wheel up to the hub evenly in a star pattern, and then we'll lower the car down and give the lug bolts a final torque. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque our lug bolts down to 90 foot pounds or 822 Newton meters. And then from there, we'll put our beauty covers back on. Always hang them in a star pattern again, whenever possible. Now that that's situated and you've done both sides of your car, let's hop inside and wrap up with the auto so that we can put our parking brake back in its operating position. Now that we're back in the Golf R, we're gonna go ahead and hit the number two, which means end the brake pad change on the auto. We'll hit OK. We can hear the pistons going back into position. All right, and at that point we can hit OK. That has ended. And then all that stuff to do from here is pump the brake pedal a couple times before you go in on your test drive. And uh, that's gonna conclude this DIY for today, my good people. Overall, a straightforward job on the Mark 7 and 7.5 Golf R. Now, there are a couple ways out there to do this brake job without the Autel. I highly suggest you look online if that's the route you want to take. We can only recommend doing it the proper way with the right tools. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below. If you want to see us do a specific job on this chassis, also drop that down there while you're at it. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. 
As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.